Hamas and Hezbollah are two armed groups fighting against Israel in the Middle East. They have different histories, beliefs, and goals, but share a common enemy, Israel. What if they teamed up against Israel? How strong would they be together? Let's look at Hamas first. Founded in 1987, it's a Palestinian resistance group wanting to free Palestine from Israeli occupation and set up an Islamic state there. They've controlled the Gaza Strip since 2007 and get support from countries like Iran, Turkey, Qatar and Sudan. Though Hamas has a significant military presence in the Middle East, it's not as strong as Israel's military, which is one of the best equipped globally. Hamas's main military wing, the Izzedine al qassam Brigade, has roughly 25,000 fighters armed with light weapons, mortars, rockets, landmines, and tunnels. They carry out most of Hamas's military actions, including attacks on Israel and clashes with their rival group, Fatah, in the West Bank. Brigade Nasser Salahuddin, the second military wing of Hamas, has approximately 5,000 fighters equipped with light weapons, mortars, rockets, and anti-tank missiles. This brigade focuses on special operations and intelligence, as well as coordination with other groups like Islamic Jihad and the People's Resistance Committees. Brigade Abu Ali Mustafa, the third military wing of Hamas, consists of around 2,000 fighters armed with light weapons, mortars, rockets, and anti-tank missiles. This brigade primarily operates in the West Bank and coordinates with other groups like the Popular Front for the PFLP, Liberation of Palestine, and the DFLP, Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Brigade Al-Quds is the fourth military wing of Hamas. It consists of approximately 1,000 fighters who are equipped with light weapons, mortars, rockets, and anti-tank missiles. This brigade primarily focuses on operations in East Jerusalem and coordinates with other groups like Fatah al-Intifada and the National Resistance Movement. Hamas acquires its weaponry from various sources, both local and foreign. Most of their weaponry is either locally produced in the Gaza Strip or smuggled through underground tunnels from Egypt. Additionally, Hamas obtains some of its weaponry from countries like Iran, Turkey, Qatar, Sudan, Syria, and Libya. Hamas's weaponry includes several types, such as rockets and missiles. These are the primary weapons Hamas uses to target Israel from a distance. Hamas possesses a variety of rockets and missiles with different ranges and explosive capabilities. Here are some examples. Qassam rockets. These are locally made rockets produced by the Izzedine al qassam Brigade. They have a range of 3 to 20 kilometers and an explosive yield ranging from 0.5 to 20 kilograms of TNT. Qassam rockets are typically launched from improvised launchers or vehicles. Grad rockets. Grad rockets are Soviet-made rockets smuggled from Egypt or Iran. They have a range of 20 to 40 kilometers and an explosive yield between 18 to 40 kilograms of TNT. Fodger rockets. These are Iranian-made rockets based on Chinese designs. They have a range of 40 to 100 kilometers and an explosive yield between 45 to 175 kilograms of TNT. M75 rockets. Locally produced by the Izzedine al qassam Brigade, these rockets have a range of 60 to 80 kilometers and an explosive yield ranging from 90 to 100 kilograms of TNT. J80 rockets. Also produced locally by the Izzedine al qassam Brigade, 
These rockets have a range of 80 to 100 kilometers and an explosive yield between 100 to 150 kilograms of TNT. R-160 rockets. Another locally produced rocket by the Izzedine al qassam Brigade. These rockets have a range of 120 to 160 kilometers and an explosive yield between 150 to 200 kilograms of TNT. Yassin missiles. These are locally produced anti-tank missiles by the Izzedine al qassam Brigade. They have a range of 1.5 to 3 kilometers and an explosive yield between 5 to 10 kilograms of TNT. Cornet missiles. Cornet missiles are Russian-made anti-tank missiles smuggled from Iran or Syria. They have a range of 5 to 8 kilometers and an explosive yield between 7 to 10 kilograms of TNT. M302 missiles. These are ballistic missiles based on Chinese designs and manufactured in Syria. They have a range of 100 to 200 kilometers and an explosive yield between 150 to 200 kilograms of TNT. Light weapons are Hamas's primary armament in close combat or self-defense. Hamas possesses a variety of light weapons, such as pistols, rifles, machine guns, sniper rifles, and hand grenades. Some of Hamas's light weapons include Glock pistols, M16 rifles, Galil rifles, PKM machine guns, Dragunov sniper rifles, hand grenades. Hamas's coalition with other groups is one of its strategies to enhance its strength and influence in the Middle East region. Hamas has several allies and partners who share a common vision, mission or enemies with Hamas. Some of Hamas's coalitions with other groups include Coalition with Hezbollah Hezbollah is a Shiite political and military group based in Lebanon, with involvement in the conflict in Syria. Hezbollah was founded in 1982 in response to Israel's invasion of Lebanon. Hezbollah aims to expel Israel from Lebanon and defend Shiite interests in the region. Hezbollah is also an ally of Iran and Syria, as well as an adversary of the US and Saudi Arabia. Hamas and Hezbollah have had complex and varying relationships over time. They once cooperated in the war against Israel in 2006 when Hezbollah attacked Israel from northern Lebanon and Hamas attacked Israel from southern Gaza. They also had disagreements during the Syrian civil war when Hezbollah supported the Bashar al-Assad regime and Hamas supported the rebels. In 2021, Hamas and Hezbollah once again showed solidarity in the war against Israel triggered by Israel's attack on the Al-Aqsa Mosque in East Jerusalem. Hamas fired over 4,000 rockets into Israel from Gaza, while Hezbollah fired several rockets into Israel from Lebanon. The coalition between Hamas and Hezbollah provides advantages to both parties in terms of military strength, political support, financial aid and technology transfer. This coalition also presents challenges to both sides in terms of ideological differences, strategic variations and interests. Hezbollah has a military wing called Islamic Resistance, consisting of thousands of fighters trained and armed by Iran. Its military strength grew after being deployed to Syria in 2012 to assist President Bashar al-Assad in combating most of the Sunni rebels. Hezbollah is also involved in conflicts in Iraq, Yemen and Bahrain, as well as supporting Palestinian militant groups like Hamas and Islamic Jihad. Hezbollah claims to have 100,000 fighters, although independent estimates suggest lower figures, ranging from 20,000 to 40,000. Hezbollah has a centralized and disciplined command structure, as well as advanced intelligence, communication, and logistics capabilities. It also has a wide social network in Lebanon, providing political, economic, and moral support to its members. Hezbollah's main weapons are rockets and missiles, which can reach the entire territory of Israel. 
Hezbollah is known to possess approximately 150,000 rockets and missiles with various ranges and precision. Some of the rocket and missile types in Hezbollah's possession include Katyusha rockets, short-range artillery rockets originating from the Soviet Union with a range of 20 to 40 kilometers, Fajr rockets, medium-range artillery rockets originating from Iran with a range of 40 to 75 kilometers, Zelzal rockets, long-range artillery rockets originating from Iran with a range of 100 to 200 kilometers. Fateh 110 missiles, short-range ballistic missiles originating from Iran with a range of 200 to 300 kilometers. M600 missiles, short-range ballistic missiles originating from Syria with a range of 250 to 300 kilometers. Scud missiles, medium-range ballistic missiles originating from the Soviet Union with a range of 300 to 700 kilometers. Rad missiles, subsonic cruise missiles originating from Iran with a range of 350 to 500 kilometers. Yakont missiles, supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles originating from Russia with a range of 300 to 400 kilometers. Besides rockets and missiles, Hezbollah has other weapons like assault rifles, machine guns, sniper rifles, grenade launchers, landmines, drones and anti-tank missiles. They also have armoured vehicles like the T-55 and T-72 tanks. BMP-1 and BMP-2 infantry fighting vehicles and light armoured vehicles like Humvees and Toyota Hilux. If Hamas and Hezbollah joined forces against Israel, they would have significant military power. They could attack Israel from the north and south and threaten key areas like Tel Aviv, Haifa, Jerusalem and Ben Gurion Airport. This would also spread Israel's military attention and disrupt their coordination. However, a coalition between Hamas and Hezbollah would face challenges. First, they'd risk a stronger retaliation from Israel. Israel has an advantage in air force, navy, intelligence, technology and international support. Israel also has the Iron Dome missile defense system to counter most rockets from Hamas and Hezbollah. Second, they'd have to deal with their ideological, political and strategic differences. Hamas is a Sunni group with radical Islamic beliefs, while Hezbollah is a Shia group following the concept of religious leadership. Hamas focuses more on Palestinian issues, while Hezbollah is more concerned with Lebanon and Syria. Third, they'd face opposition from other parties in the region the US, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan and other Arab countries would oppose a Hamas-Hezbollah coalition, seeing them as terrorist threats to regional stability. These countries would also politically, economically and militarily support Israel. Additionally, other groups in Palestine and Lebanon, like Fatah, the PLO and Christian and Druze parties, would also oppose such a coalition because they compete with Hamas and Hezbollah for influence. In summary, Hamas and Hezbollah are two armed groups opposing Israel in the Middle East. They have different histories, ideologies and goals, but share a common enemy, Israel. If they unite against Israel, they'd have a formidable military power, but would also face huge challenges. Such a coalition would escalate conflicts in the region, influencing regional politics, security and global stability.